Along with there being short-term uh, risks of smoking, there's also long-term risks of smoking. So about 30% of all strokes in people um, under the age of 65 are attributable or, or, or caused by smoking. And the same can be said around heart disease. Um, looking at something like lung cancer, about 80% of cases of lung cancer are directly related to smoking. And looking at cancer, I suppose, as a, more generally, uh, about one in five um, uh, causes of cancer are again attributable to smoking. So, so we've got cancer risks, we've got heart risks, we've got risks of stroke, um, and there's also things like uh, you know that affect people on a day-to-day -day ba basis, being more breathless, having thicker mucus, that smoker's cough. Um, so there are lots of risks of smoking, and and we're really really keen to support people to to decrease their risks by supporting them to quit. Uh, within a cigarette there are thousands of chemicals, more than about 4,000 different chemicals that make up a cigarette. Um, and nicotine is the one that everyone kind of thinks of because it's what you're, you're dependent on or what you're addicted to and it's what drives you to smoke every single day. Um, but it is a lot of the other chemicals that are in these cigarettes that, that cause the toxic and, and the cancer causing effects that, that come with smoking. So there's things like acetone, uh, which can be found in nail polish remover, things like propylene gly glycol, which is in, in antifreeze, um, butane, which is in cigarette lighters, formaldehyde, which we use to, to preserve specimens and to preserve bodies. So, so the whole bunch of things that, that obviously uh, we'd never otherwise put in our bodies, um, but unfortunately they're, they're in cigarettes and people who smoke are, are doing exactly that. And when they realise what it is, they're dumbfounded. They're pretty shocked at what they, re what they find out and when they realise that 69 of them can cause cancer, um, that really kind of sets a light bulb in them thinking, wow, I didn't know that. Like, and I say to them, you know, you wouldn't drink lighter fluid from your lighter that you light your smoke with, so why would you smoke it? Why would you, you wouldn't, you know, eat the oil from your car and stuff and the battery acid from your battery car, so, you know, why would you want to have that in your lungs? And they kind of realise, they're like, wow, is that in that? Or is that in that, in that cigarette? And I'm like, yeah, it is. And they're like, wow. And, and everyone's motivations for, for quitting smoking are going to be different. Some will have a completely health angle. Um, so we have a lot of clients who are having surgery. Surgery is a time that's really stressful. Uh, you know, surgery is a risk. You've got to, you know, sign a form that, you know, says that this A, B and C could happen to you. And one of the, the biggest things that we know that can improve your chances of having an uneventful surgery, which is what you want, is to quit smoking. Um, so for, for one client, it might be health. For another client, Client, it might be um, they're trying to get pregnant. For another client, it might be purely money. Chronic pain, I would say, is another reason to avoid smoking. So if you're um, dealing with chronic pain, that of course affects your mood and it, you know, very often when people have chronic pain, they'll feel stressed, they'll feel anxious and they'd have very low mood. And so often, people think might turn to smoking as a way to, to manage that, those feelings and for the boredom. But it has a, a terrible impact on your health. So if you've got chronic pain, it's actually going to affect your pain management. So your medications aren't going to work as well. It has a physical effect in, in lots, lots of different ways. But you know, one simple example is your wound healing. So if you're trying to recover from back surgery, smoking's not going to help you with that. And it also has that, um, it, it gets in the way of you actually um, working out healthy things to do to, to deal with your pain. So smoking can, people turn to it as a distraction. They also quite often will turn to alcohol as well as a distraction from the pain as a way to manage it. But it will actually make it worse in the long run. So the best thing to do is try to work out positive strategies to manage those feelings and the mood and you know the things they recommend for chronic pain 
are very similar to what we recommend for smoking. So stress management, exercise, moving more, um, positive activities, social interactions. So when it comes to, to physical appearance, there are lots of benefits that can be had from quitting smoking. There's actually quite a few studies um, in twins where one has been a smoker and one hasn't been a smoker and just the changes in, in their face over uh, the years. And it's quite remarkable that, that the one that smoke has more wrinkles, the skin's less clear, less bright, the eyes aren't as white, um, and certainly there's, there's staining to the teeth. Um, so when you quit smoking, you can expect clearer and brighter skin, you can expect brighter eyes, whiter teeth. And one of the things I suppose that, that people always worry about is their hands. Um, and they can be afraid to shake hands with people if they're a smoker. And that's because of the, the staining of not only the fingers, but the fingernails. And, and again, the good news is once you quit smoking, that all improves. Um, so lots of benefits for phys physical appearance when you quit. Yeah, I've seen my mum struggle from the start and I'm going to watch her to the, to the end. But her, as in a smoker, she, she was smoking for a few years but then it caught up to her when she quit. But now, her, she can't even blow into a breathalyzer when, when we like, go through you know, the breathos, when they have like, the roundabouts. Yeah, she can't even do them. She can't because she doesn't have enough air. Our smoke alizer, I tried to do our smoke alizer on her. She couldn't, we, she couldn't blow in it enough for it to pick up because she couldn't get that air out. And I was just, yeah, been watching all the little things of what she's been doing. And I've been how, watching how she gets, you know, she'll get stressed out really easy. She'll get puffed out really easy to the point where she'll start feeling light, lightheaded. And I've got to start doing things for her. I've got to start helping her. So that's why I'm back at home. Because when I'm not at work, I help her do everything. And then in my breaks, that's when I'll have a cigarette. Yeah, so carbon monoxide is the, the gas that's produced when people smoke. Now carbon monoxide is also produced by cars, it's what comes out of our car exhaust and it's also what comes out of our gas heaters. And the problem with carbon monoxide is that it loves red blood cells. And by loves red blood cells, what I mean is that it attaches itself quite strongly to these red blood cells. And that's a problem because we usually have oxygen on these red blood cells. So all of a sudden we don't. Uh, and what that means is, is our heart and our other organs have to work harder to compensate. And sometimes our body will actually think, what's going on here and it'll make more red blood cells to compensate and as a result our blood becomes thick, it becomes sticky and that's where some of those heart and stroke risks come from. So carbon monoxide is definitely one of the components of cigarettes that is really uh, uh, integral to, to the disease causing effects of smoking. Yeah so I come from a big family. Um, so my father died in 2009 um, of emphysema and smoking related diseases. Um, you'd think that would be a big wake up call for me and it kind of was a starting kind of point of looking at my smoking and that was way before I stepped into this position or had any type of role within tobacco. Um, it opened my eyes in that sense. Um, also prior to that I've had um, two uncles that have passed away from lung cancer due to smoking so there has been smoking related deaths within my family. Um, the uncles I was way too young for it. it was before my teenage years but my father was a big 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 part of um, him dying of smoke related diseases opened my eyes up and made me kind of look at my own mortality I suppose yeah so I'm getting into the age age brackets where I need to look at that yeah my father was a probably about a 70 a day smoker yeah he was a really big big smoker he would um, take a cigarette and light the next cigarette with the cigarette before putting that other one out that's how much of a heavy kind of smoker he was. Um, definitely, I definitely wish I'd never had the first cigarette. Uh, for one, it, it affects my breathing and lung, lung function. Uh, two, it affects my health. Um, three, if I would have known the, the, the seriousness of addiction when it comes to nicotine, I never would have taken it up. Um, and I suppose when we're young, we think we're invincible and stuff like that. So you kind of don't think of your future. Yeah, so, but looking back, yeah, if I know what I know now, no. I would never have taken that. I would like to be committed to it, only because just to, to break that chain in the family. You know, see my mum smoke, my nan smoke, my aunties and uncles all smoke. So I'm gonna get teary. My auntie died from cancer. We pop sick from cancer at the moment. 